Greetings all. Last Outrider here, finishing on part three of What is the Inquisition? We're going to continue with the missions of Agent KXK99, Noana Zankis. Maybe after the first two videos, you might have figured out what she is and who she's working for. If not, I'm still not going to tell you. You'll just have to figure it out. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to mission DWQ slash 28Q. Target. Over console designate Maxim Din. Maxim Din has served the administratum for some 150 years. At least 75 of these years within the Calexis sector. Of his career before he arrived in Scintilla, very little is certain. However, I came to believe, some decades ago, that he had participated in at least two sub-counselor de delegations to Terra, and so implemented a series of Epsilon Doctrine vigilance routines, limited exclusively to bonded TerraNet metaprobes. For years, the Epsilon routines returned only limited signals of intelligence, amounting to little more than background noise. And then, three months ago, the returns increased exponentially. I ordered a CypherCon audit, backtracing the metaprobes to within a tolerance of seven generations. Though the process was costly in resources and chanced detection, I believe it was worthwhile, for it established firm connections between Maxim Din and at least a dozen of our most bitter rivals within Ordo Calixis. At this stage, even in a transmission I know to be secure and untraceable, I hesitate to name those rivals. We have all seen the results of such breaches in protocol, and I need not reiterate the lessons we have all learned. The single most pertinent item of interest to the subcell is the mission on which the subject is now engaged. Maxim Din has been assigned to an extra-consular mission on Iocanthos, with specific orders to circumvent the administratum's presence at Port Suffering, and to seek an audience, not, as one would suspect, with King Skull, but with his rival warlord, if such a term is applicable, known as Seth the Voice. It is my belief that those whom Dim is undoubtedly aligned with wish to subvert the mission of the voice to their own ends. What those ends might be, we have no way of knowing, but I consider such an overt play to justify an equally overt response from the subcell. To this end, I intend to activate Agent KXK-99 with the aim of executing a Level 6 termination mission. The Mourner The task of eliminating Maxim Din will be extremely challenging, for the Oval Over Council designate is attended at all times by a Psychana Templar Calix, who goes by the title The Mourner. I have little pertinent information on this individual, but the very fact that his assignment is to protect Din speaks of a hidden and powerful influence at work. It concerns me all the more that I can establish little in the way of solid evidence linking Din to our enemies, and I have no information on who may have sponsored or ordered the mourner to protect him. The mourner is, unsurprisingly, highly skilled in the warrior arts, 
and is a telekinetic of fearful prowess, possibly approaching upper gamma class levels. What few solid reports I can find state that he has served for three years as part of the Army Group 13's High Command Close Protection Detachment and undertook a number of tactical assignments during that period. These include service as a battle psyker during Ar Operation Umbridge. In this incident, he fought the rebels at the defense of Falcon Ridge, earning honorary membership to the Centillion 99th Staff Cadre by way of recognition. The mourner's presence is a high-level threat to the clean execution of this mission. Mission Archival Extract, Retrieve and Purge, Agent KXK-99 to be activated as per Protocol D-33, 22.3 Recession, Exfiltation from Facility 9K via Secure Tertiary Route into the Archaeos Primary Hub, Collegium Vouchsafe Omega Transportation. <clears throat> Zonkis's transportation to Iocanthos was achieved by way of secure berth on the Rote for Luck, a naval, naval vessel whose master has served the Collegium faithfully in such a capacity for well over a decade. The transit was uneventful. Zonkis was secreted in a Type D-12 cargo unit and made planetfall at the world's only serviceable interface facility in Port Suffering. The cargo unit was delivered, as per sealed orders, to a bonded longshore facility adjacent to the port's counting house. Operational restrictions dictate that the handling should be carried out exclusively by servitors, and all indications are that this stage of the mission was completed without incident. Zankis remained hidden in the cargo unit for 48 hours, as per her orders, observing her immediate surrounding for signs of mission compromise. Having determined that all was well, she escalated the operation to the next phase, just prior to dawn on the third day after arrival. Zankis had two choices to complete her exfiltration of Port Suffering, the main gate or the bastion walls. The walls being 20 meters high and equipped with numerous sentry positions, Zankis determined to utilize the low light levels and slip out through the gate, timing her maneuver with the exit of a merchant land crawler heading out into the wastes. This she achieved by grappling the underside of the vehicle and securing herself beneath its primary superstructure. <coughs> the journey across the wastes was taxing, but still within the agent's capabilities. The land crawler traveled north for 100 kilometers, in the general direction of the horde's last known location. It was only when the crawler reached a junction on the track that Zankis was forced to take a hand in events. The vehicle took not the western path, but the northeastern one, away from the horde's location. Unhitching herself from her position beneath the vehicle, Zankis climbed up and entered the vehicle's main cargo area by way of a side hatch. Within, she encountered seven armed crew members, which she dispatched within five seconds. The bodies were thrown clear of the land crawler. They would not draw suspicion on a world as war-torn as Iocanthos. Passing forward through the crawler's crew bays, Zankis encountered and dispatched another three crew members before she entered the bridge. The captain, at the wheel, was terminated by way of pinpoint application of a power stiletto to the cervical vertebrae, following allowing the agent to take control of the vehicle 
as the captain died. Having gained control of the land crawler, Zankus now proceed to navigate to the location in which the horde was believed to be mustering. Doing so was a challenging task, which necessitated Zankus to remain at the wheel for a further 50 hours. Upon reaching the coordinates, Zankus found that the horde had moved on. I recommend the source that provided this low-grade intelligence be liquidated. Fortunately, Zankis was able to follow the horde's trail on foot, abandoning the crawler once the barbarians came into view. The next stage of the mission, I confess, I have apprehensions about. For I had no way of knowing how the members of the Horde would react to a stranger in their midst. There was no way of making a stealthy approach, so Zankis made her way with caution, looking for the opportunity to disguise herself in the garb of one of Seth's followers, should the need arise. As it transpired, the followers made no comment whatsoever as Zankis moved about. This afforded the agent an ample opportunity to observe Seth's followers at close quarters, and she gained a large amount of intelligence that may prove of great value in future operations. See subfile KJL slash 993-44. To summarize, the followers of Seth the Voice appeared of a varied mix, ranging from hardy ex-mercenaries to a great many shabby followers who clearly had no experience in handling a weapon at all. It was noticeable to Zankis that the more professional of the ex-mercenaries gave her a very wide berth, even if they did not acknowledge her presence in any other way. While the lowly followers failed to note her presence or the threat she might present to them at all. Following the general milling of the horde, Zankist moved slowly and cautiously towards the epicenter. She observed a great many traders of all types moving through it too, but especially arms dealers. It is noted that most of the weapons being offered were of substandard, unsanctioned manufacturer of scant value on most of the worlds in the sector. After three hours, Zankist closed on the Horde's center of mass, noting that the general quality and upkeep of the thousands of vehicles all around increased with many appearing to have been liberated from the stocks of various planetary defense forces. As she approached the central mass of the Horde, Zankis noted that the air was filled by a constant and increasingly loud sermon broadcast, undoubtedly given by Seth himself. The denser the crowd, the larger the sound of the sermon as many of the followers appeared to be carrying Vox units through which the addresses were being relayed. Then, as the crowd closed in all around her, Zankis caught sight of Vi Seth, the so-called Voice, Prophet of the Emperor. Seth was atop his personal vehicle, an armored scout with a superstructure built up to the form a pulpit from which he was preaching a sermon. As per her previous reports submitted to the Collegium, it appears that Seth, on the surface, is an unoppressive orator, yet nevertheless appears to be able to hold sway over a large congregation. This subject deserves further investigation, but it is beyond the scope of this report. 
with the congregation's attentions fixed upon Seth, Zankis took the opportunity to move around the crowd, making her way behind the pulpit. There, she located a large group of Seth's inner guard, a cadre of warriors calling themselves Seth Saints, and among them, Maxim Din, attended closely by the mourner. Her target located, Zankis initiated the close reconnaissance phrase of the mission, gathering information on Din's activities, movements, and levels of protection. It was immediately apparent that a direct attack would be impossible at that time, and she would have to track her target for a protracted period before settling on a suitable course of action. The agent tracked Din and his guardian for the remainder of the day and well into the night, the voice preaching his sermon to the assembled horde all the while. Around midnight, Din and the mourner made to leave the scene, retiring towards a large armored vehicle that appeared to be built from the remains of a wrecked Gorgon assault transport. Zankis followed the target and now felt able to close with him thanks to the darkness. It was at this point that the mission took an unexpected turn. It appears that the mourner is not only a powerful telekinetic, but has also mastered a number of secondary powers, allowing him to sense danger and discern the immediate threats to his master. As the agent approached, the Gorgon time suddenly slowed to a crawl. The mourner turned and looked straight into the eyes of Agent Zankis, and the crowd milling about nearby appeared to part. Zankis reacted in an instant, drawing a power stiletto and diving to her right into the cloud. A moment later, a torrent of psychic force passed through the followers, shredding a dozen and wounding scores more. Zankis had avoided the blast and now worked her way through the panicking mob, using the confusion as cover to outflank her target. Meanwhile, there was a serious possibility that the primary target would escape. Realizing this, Zankis determined to deal with the mourner in the most direct way possible. Before the cloud could disperse, Zankis vaulted high into the air, descending upon the mourner from an entirely unexpected quarter. Despite the surprise she had no doubt inflicted, the mourner anticipated the attack and turned to face her. As Zankis descended through the air, stiletto in hand and ready to strike, the mourner summoned a fearsome assault of focused psychic power. The blast caught Zankis with a glancing blow across the left side of her body. Yet the momentum of her maneuver was unstoppable. An instant later, Zankis was upon the mourner and in a single strike plunged the power stiletto into his left ear the blade protruding from his right. The mourner was immediately terminated, but Zankis was seriously wounded. She fell to the ground beside the body of Din's guardian, and turning her head, saw the over-council designate boarding the gar Gorgon by way of its frontal assault ramp. Feeling her wounds threatening to overcome her, the agent glanded a powerful concoction of combat stimulants. This allowed her to regain optimum combat efficiency and continue pursuit. By now, the crowd of followers had fled, but the first of a number of Seth saints were arriving on the scene. These opened fire as Zankis rushed for the Gorgon's assault ramp, but she avoided the fire with 
preternatural agility. Din had activated the ramp, which was rising as Zankis ran towards it. With a single leap, she passed through the rapidly closing gap, and as the hatch sealed behind, found herself in the vehicle's assault bay, face to face with Maxim Din. When the over-council addressed Zankis, he stated that he had expected an attempt to be made on his life, and then listed five names of those he believed might sanction such an act. My name was amongst them, as were two other members of the Collegium. Zankis glanded another dose of combat stems, but as she approached Din, he produced a device of unknown manufacture. Despite concerted efforts, I have not been able to identify the providence of the article, but its effect was obvious. Depressing a control stud, Din was immediately surrounded by some manner of etheric manifestation, a swirling mass of gibbering, leering faces racing around his form. Diving through the manifestation, even as she did so, she felt her soul being torn by the creature's from that place we dare not describe. Zankis attacked, showing no hesitation in the execution of her mission. Breaking through the swirling mass, she was upon her target, and even as the creatures assailed her, both physically and spiritually, she dispatched her target and destroyed the device he had activated. The instant she did so, the manifestation blinked out of existence and silence descended upon the assault bay. At this point, Zankis felt her injuries overtake her, and she knew that to gland any more stimulants would be to inflict a grievous strain upon her system. Nevertheless, she did so and before making good her escape, she conducted a hurried search of the over-council designate's body, recovering a document case. The remainder of the mission is of little import to report, but suffice it to say, the banded, badly wounded agent Zankis exfiltrated the horde. She in then embarked upon a 17-day trek upon foot, back to Port Suffering, avoiding Seth's followers who had taken it upon themselves to pursue her. Three weeks later, Zankis returned to Facility 9K. I trust the subcell shares my conclusions following this mission. Not only did Maxim Den know of the involvement of myself and several others, but the documentation recovered from his body appears to have amounted to a message to the Vice Seth from a number of prominent recongregators amongst the Ordo Calixis. It is my belief that these individuals, one of which is undoubtedly our old in enemy, Inquisitor Hulk, seeks Seth's co-alignment in the undertaking of as yet an unknown mission to us. Furthermore, the mention of a number of prominent ablationists in the document led me to believe that these re-congregators are on the verge of some great undertaking. I have no clue as to what this may be, but the evidence of the document suggests that it is to be advanced significantly upon the twelfth moon of the world of Misery 9, 
three days beyond the vaccinide into the periphery. It is my intention to dispatch Agent Zankis and three other Reapers to Misery 9. Whatever the recongregators have planned, there cannot be allowed to happen for the good of the entire Collegium. Next mission. Subject KXK-99, Nomen Noana Zankis, status active, handler deleted, holding facility 9K Archeos. Dissemination, limited, tenembrae, collegium, subcell 7, sleeper, alpha, omega. Begin transcript. Handler. Agent KXK-99. Subject, silence, 12 minutes, 13 seconds. Handler, Agent KXK-99, do you hear me? Subject, I see it. I see it coming. Handler, see what coming, Agent? Subject, it brings the end. It knows me. Handler, do you know, girl, who you are? Subject, I, I do know my master. I am. Handler, and who are you? Subject, I am Noana Zankis. I am Reaper. I am Moritat. Pause. One minute, 48 seconds. Handler. How do you know this? Subject. It told me. It knows my name. It will not let me forget. In transcript. Commit to file XXY slash TNAB slash 238 BDI 733 slash HY. Planetary data Misery 9. Population 12,500. Tithe grade Exactus non. Geography. Volcanic plains dominated by sulfuric acid-filled impact craters. Government. Colonial Council. Planetary Governor. High Counselor Jangus Rock. Adept Presence. Very low. Military. Colonial Militia. Approximately five companies. Trade. Minimal. The Misery Nine colony was existed for eight centuries, originally being established as an offshoot of the Makchenko dynasty enterprise in the subsector that ultimately failed to produce any profits. The colony is, to all intents and purposes, independent, and the high counselor of its ruling body is treated, if not formally recognized, as an imperial commander by subsector authorities. The colony exists as little more than a substance level and has precious few exports of any value to the subsector. None choose to live there, and most would leave if they had the means. Mission. DTT slash 99W. Target unknown. The word is given. The Collegium is under direct threat from an unknown foe, and I intend to ensure that we, not our enemies, dictate the time and place of the coming battle. I have dispatched a Reaper cell to the twelfth moon of Misery 9. I do not know what they will find there, nor what effect the outcome of the mission may have 
on our continued existence. We can only pray the emperor looks upon our enterprise kindly. Addendum. My sources inform me that none other than Inquisitor Hulk has recently set out for Misery 9. I have updated the mission profile to make it clear to the Reaper Cell that should this individual be encountered, he is to be terminated as a matter of extreme urgency. Mission Archival Extract, Restrieve and Purge. I can scarcely comprehend what has apparently come to pass on Misery 9. Hazankis has returned to Facility 9K. She is in a fearful state and, in all likelihood, lost to us as a useful operative. The remainder of Reaper Cell has failed to return. The agent's mind appears to have been blasted. I have been able to retrieve only fragments of the mission. Yet these fragments are of such import to the mission of the Collegium that I must describe them in detail. Fragment 1. The interface terminal at Misery 9 Colony Hub. The facility appears run down and ill-maintained. The entire terminal is in half-light, and the cargo handlers have fled to the shadows. Fragment 2. A crowd has gathered somewhere in the service district. Approximately 100 people are looking up towards the sky, their hands clamped over their ears. Fragment 3. Inquisitor Hulk. I could scarcely believe my eyes when I retrieved this fragment. Hulk is surrounded by a group of tech priests, many of whom are taking readings from a vast array of instruments pointed up towards the sky. Fragment 4. Video archives sequestered. Fragment 5. The aftermath of the visitation on the, of the tyrant star. The colonists have been sent into some form of atavistic rage. They tear into their fellows with tooth and nail, ripping each other apart with their bare hands. The tech priests are all dead. A number of them having suffered cranial implosion at the moment of the visitation. Hulk is nowhere to be seen, nor is there any evidence of his fate. If Inquisitor Hulk has survived, then every other member of the Tenembre Collegium will be seeking him out. We have no way of knowing what his mental state is right now, but we cannot afford to take the risk that he has somehow clung on to his sanity and has evidence of the Reaper Cell's attack upon him. We the ablationists must represent the only true way to salvation. And we must make our move now. We must arise, all of us, and take this possibly final opportunity to destroy our foes. I am certain that our foes within the Collegium will be intent upon the search for the Inquisitor Hulk, and therefore not watching their backs as carefully as they might. I say, now is our time. Let us arise and purge the Ordo Calixis once and for all. End of file. Commit to archive or delete. So there you go. That is what I believe a good Inquisitor story should be about. But that's just my opinion. I will continue on next time with a little more detail about Inquisitorial factions and fun stuff. But until then, 
Bye. <laughs>